I'll be really strict for like eight or 12 weeks and I'll do a really hard program with a coach or a trainer and get in really great shape. And I might do two or three cycles of that. But then there are often times where I'll just stop working out completely for like four to six months. So I've always been really irregular with my workouts. And so I set this goal last year that sounded impossible at the time, but I said the goal, okay, I'm going to work out 365 days in a row, which I know for some people, they already do that. But for me, like I was so, I was so, I'm like a sporadic person and I don't like working out. It was like a big deal. Yeah! What's up, everybody? Your life alchemist, your dragon. Welcome to Alchemized Life. I'm your host, Justin David Carl. This is a show where I seek out and share expertise, wisdom, and thought leadership in all domains with the mission of empowering and inspiring you to proactively design and truly live a life worth living. We're all in this together. And when we do the work together, we go so much farther, so much faster, and have so much more fun. Without further ado, let's dig into this episode and alchemize life. So everybody, this is actually the second time we're hitting record because I failed to hit record the first time. I'm Justin David Carl, aka Dragon, and we have one of our, our very first guests, Julie, from Methodology, uh, an incredible company that I'm going to talk about in just a moment. But first and foremost, Julie, thank you so much for joining today. Thank you so much for putting up with me and doing the first 10 to 15 minutes over again. So, Julie, I love you. I'm still happy to be here, Dragon. It was a great practice run. Awesome. (laughs) Cool. So, really, the whole point of this podcast is all about sharing uh, well-being stories from multiple walks of life, people in all areas of business and uh, other arenas of life. And Julie really is an incredible person, has an incredible company and an incredible story that I've been wanting to dig into for years, but for whatever reason, haven't got around to. And I couldn't have thought of a better person to really uh, start this with a story that I've been dying to hear myself. So Julie is the CEO and co-founder of Methodology, which is a premium meal prep company for busy professionals like myself. And I've used methodology in the past. I also just had methodology yesterday and today. And I can't express how grateful I am for how much time it saved me because I do cook 98% of all my food. And I just shaved off probably like 40 minutes yesterday and 40 minutes today. So I've literally got 80 minutes of my life back because of methodology. So On that note, thank you so much, Julie, for your company. And to really kick off, I'd love to hear your origin story. You know, how you grew up, how your well-being journey started, you know, what was the, you know, catalyst for your journey into well-being and, you know, that whole apotheosis into your current company, your current state of being, et cetera. So without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to you. Great. Thank you for the intro. And I'm so glad we saved you so much time. It's such a valuable asset. Uh, So for those of you who are listening but can't see me, I am Vietnamese American and was raised by a single mom. Grew up here in Orange County in Southern California. And my mom really wanted me to fit in with other kids. And so rather than feed me Vietnamese food growing up, she wanted to feed me American food, which she thought was McDonald's, KFC, Burger King. So I ate a lot of fast food growing up and it really didn't affect me until starting around senior year of high school. I was a top performer up until then, straight A's, all the nerdy activities that one would need to do. <laughs> and but but I remember something changed around senior year where I just no longer wanted to be around people anymore. Mm-hmm. During lunch, instead of eating with other kids, I would go find an empty classroom and eat alone and just 
basically hide from people. And I didn't know why at the time. And I went off to college and things just progressively got worse with my health. I had to be on prescription drugs for acne. I had to carry an inhaler with me everywhere I went because I would get asthma attacks constantly. I had eczema all over my elbows and my face. So I was always scratching myself because it was burning. I had trouble sleeping at night. So I was on anti-insomnia drugs. Uh, They gave me drugs for panic attacks because I would get panic attacks during exams at Stanford and just blank out and not be able to answer any of the questions. So my, my health just progressively kept getting worse. And somehow, I don't know how I somehow still graduated, somehow still got a job. My first job was at JP Morgan. And then after that, I went to join a tech startup called Lumosity, but I was still really unhealthy during that time. And I didn't know why none of my doctors ever asked me about my diet at any point. They always just wrote me a new prescription. One day the eczema for whatever reason went away. And it's something that I'd had for so long that I really wanted to figure out why it went away. So I spent a lot of time thinking through what did I do differently that caused my eczema to go away? And the only thing I could think of because I'm a pretty habitual person was I had stopped eating these fake soy nugget things that I had eaten every day religiously for a long time. And I think I thought that that was what it was. So I started doing research online and learned that there were these things called elimination diets that you could do and that food could cause tons of health issues like acne and asthma and depression. And I just never knew food could cause these health problems. The only thing that I thought food could cause was just being overweight. If I ate too much, I had no idea that food could cause all the other health issues I was dealing with. I thought everything else I was dealing with was genetic or completely out of my control because it was environmental. I thought, oh, I have asthma because the air here is so bad, right? I have asthma because it tends to run in my family. So I never tried to fix these health problems because I thought that I was stuck with them. So I put myself on an elimination diet and read tons of different nutrition books. And tell us a little bit about the elimination diet. Like what, like what, for, because I'm familiar with it, but I've never done one. And I'm sure the audience would love to kind of understand, you know, kind of what the point of that is, what the process is, et cetera. Yeah, that's a great question. I forget that most people haven't done one before. They're pretty hard. And that's why basically if you go on the internet and look up elimination diet, there are tons of varieties, but they'll give you a list of foods that are really, that really commonly cause health issues for a lot of people. So it's a long list of things like you might see eggs, chicken, dairy. It's a long list of foods. And what you're supposed to do is you eliminate everything on that list for a couple of weeks and then see how, see how your health improves. And most likely it will, if you're lucky, it will, which means, okay, something that you removed was making you worse. Now you just need to figure out what it is. So then what you do is you reintroduce foods back into your diet one at a time. So let's say you've eliminated dairy, eggs, and almonds, hypothetically, Mm -hmm. right? Then you might start eating almonds again. So you'll eat just, you know, you'll introduce almonds to your diet. You might eat and then keep it the same for a couple of weeks. And if your health issues are still gone, then you're like, great. It probably wasn't the almonds. I can eat almonds. Uh, But if you get worse again, then you realize, okay, like I have a problem with almonds. I need to avoid almonds. Yeah. And so I did this for tons of different foods and realized that I have food sensitivities to wheat, to dairy. Uh, yeah, those are actually, those were two, my two big ones. I don't really have that big of food sensitivities. And with, with soy, it turns out it's really just like the fake processed soy products. Mm -hmm. ones that I was eating. There are just these really gnarly processed foods. I didn't have problems with edamame. So uh, I just couldn't eat a lot of the processed food soy things because who knows what kind of chemicals they put into those things that that was giving me eczema. And then I just also learned that different proteins like chicken for me, I can't overeat. If I eat too much of any one kind of protein, 
constantly, if I don't rotate my proteins, then I start to get eczema. So mm -hmm. I have to constantly rotate all my different protein sources. That's and yeah, it's a lot of work to learn all this stuff, but I was able to get off literally every prescription drug, lose weight, and then be like a, I just never thought it was possible. A normal, happy, healthy person who's in every a single food. prescription. Every oh. drug, every drug was wow. gone. It was gone. The acne was gone. No more sleep problems. No more panic attacks. No more depression. I was optimistic again. Like literally every health problem went away once I just removed those handful of foods, literally just cut out wheat and dairy and started rotating my proteins and was really good about, you know, I never liked sweets much. So I continued to not eat sweets and other processed foods and yeah. Yeah. And it totally so, changed my life. It sounds like that happened in like a month. How long was that process? Oh, that was all in. It was probably two years. Okay. We really sorted all out. I had a lot of gains initially just cutting out dairy. Within a couple of months of cutting out dairy, I was, I didn't have, um, cause I used to just constantly have like a stuffy nose, itchy ears, you know, itchy eyes, just the mm -hmm. allergies constantly year round. Within cutting out dairy for a few weeks, that was just gone. I was like, oh my God, this is what it feels like to just breathe normally. <laughs> I can just breathe. <laughs> that was fast. You don't know like what you're missing until you get it back, right? <laughs> exactly. exactly. That's really amazing. Actually, just a small share on my side, you know, I went vegan um, at the beginning uh, or plant-based then ultimately vegan at the beginning of 2020 and about a year or two prior to that, I, for the first time ever in my life, got eczema. Oh. Yeah. So, and I was like, like, at first I had no idea what it was. I was like, I have some sort of rash and it was on my lower back. You know, it's kind of like in the area where like, I tend to sweat the most at the gym, like the lower back, like where, you know, your, your, your undergarments kind of like me and your, the waist uh, band of your, you know, your, your pants and your belt. So there's like pressure and things on it. And I was like, this is like, you know, for those who've never experienced a, uh, a, a skin condition, it is very challenging. And, you know, mine was somewhere hidden, mm -hmm. whereas Julie's was on her face. So yeah. it, like, when you're telling me this story, no wonder you're depressed and like super anxiety. Cause like, I couldn't even imagine having to like wanting to itch my face, being wondering like what people are like, you know, like thinking when they see me, you know, I'm sure you had to wear like more makeup than you really wanted to. And it was a whole process every single day. Right. I'm assuming. Exactly. exactly. On your face is the worst. It makes you completely, you can't, I wish I could say I, I was a big enough person to be confident, despite the fact that there were red patches on my face, but I just didn't feel confident. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, circling back, uh, basically, uh, you know, this took me, uh, I don't know, uh, finally going to an esthetician and then like doing a biopsy on it where they cut off a piece of my skin and all that stuff. And they're like, yeah, we think it's eczema. And then, <laughs> and then I went plant-based in the beginning of 2020 and it disappeared. And I was like, what? Like, and you know, they had given me like uh, topical steroids and it would go away, but then it would come back. And for the most part, it's been completely gone. Now, occasionally when I'm like overworked, like stressed out and not getting enough sleep, like it will sort of like, if I'm like training too hard at the gym and too hard at work and not getting enough sleep, it will slightly come back but nowhere near where it was. And for the most part, it's pretty much gone. So it's amazing what food and your diet can do just for your skin condition alone, not to mention energy mood. Like it's so cool that you got off like anti-anxiety and like your depression went away. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, it's miraculous. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I felt compelled to start my company because I thought, no one taught me this. I had what was supposedly one of the best educations in America. None of my <laughs> friends taught me. They didn't teach me this at school. And yeah. so I thought- You didn't learn this at Stanford. Exactly. They didn't teach I love it. Stanford. I went to Stanford too, but it's like, you don't learn this stuff anywhere. It's yeah. crazy. 
Yeah. Well, it's, it's unfortunate that in America, you actually have to learn how to eat because we're surrounded by so much toxic food. You know, there are other places in the world where you can just eat, right? But in America, you have to educate yourself in order to know how to la- navigate the minefield that is food here. So I wanted to start my business. I, you know, initially, actually, I started a nutrition education company before I started oh, Method cool. Oyster because my thinking was, oh, I need to teach people everything I learned. And the thing is, I put a lot of people through that program. They learned a lot. And then what I saw is they were still struggling. So once they learned, oh, I can't eat dairy or I can't eat this or that, they were so busy with work that they weren't actually able to follow the diets they knew they needed to follow. Yeah. And that's when I realized, okay, I can't just build software to solve this. I really want to help people use food as medicine. I'm going to have to actually you know, suck it up and like start a food company, which is not something that I wanted to do because I knew how hard it would be relative to building a software company. <laughs> <laughs> Low margin, perishable, all of that. I hadn't really done much in food before other than bartender, waitress or here and there when I was younger. Uh, but I really wanted to solve the problem for people and knew that I realized that if I just deliver really high quality, whole unprocessed foods to people, they don't even need to learn the nutrition behind it, right? They just need to eat just, okay. If it comes in this box, you're allowed to eat it. And if you just do that, your life will change it in, you know, for the better in every possible way. A hundred percent. I mean, just speaking to my own, you know, experience, like for me, it, it takes a lot of time and investment to prepare my own meals. Now I, I enjoy it, but like, and I don't have kids and like, you know, I work at a well-being company that, you know, respects a work-life balance and, and wants us to really live that balance. But I am, you know, I am the, you know, potentially the 1%, right? Most, most people don't even, they have kids, they have responsibilities like work is crazy Um, Their environment is not conducive to them, you know, eating nutritiously. So like people, you know, we are products of our environment, right? And so if our environment, you know, what is like Julie's environment as a kid was, you know, fast food. So that's what she ate, you know, and unfortunately, like that's what a lot of people still eat, like as they, you know, become adults. And so a company like yours is really perfect for like people like me. And really, you know, I would say (laughs) anyone who's a working professional. So let's talk a little bit about, I want to know a little bit more about this nutrition company uh, that that are like, you know, education, nutrition, education company, and then kind of like how you actually started methodology. Like how many years did you do this, you know, nutrition company? Were you doing this while you were at JP Morgan or Lu- Luminosity? Like how, like, give us like, cause it sounds like it's Julie's an overnight excess. And I know you're like 10 years in the making or maybe not that long, but maybe that long. Um, whereas like, I don't want to gloss over kind of the details of like how that actually came about because it's really cool. You started two companies out of your passion for your own well-being and wanting to share that kind of knowledge with others. I really do love that you're like, yeah, people like they want to learn it, but they don't have the time. So you solve for the problem that really needs to be solved for. And then when people do later have the time, they have such an incredible foundation from which to build. But yeah, tell us about that nutrition education company. When did you start that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I started that company while I was still working at Lumosity. And it started because people would come to me for questions and help with their nutrition, because already at that point, I had figured out stuff on my own and was just really careful about my diet. And people knew that I spent a lot of free time reading about nutrition and studying it. And it was a passion of mine. And so people were already coming to me and I would just write out meal plan for them. Oh, wow. We'll just joke about it being a Julie diet. And it was funny because people would know people at work would know who was on the Julie diet. And, and I was the only one at this tech company who would wear stilettos to work. So 
people like on the Julie diet, they, if they were in the kitchen eating cookies and they heard like the stilettos come into the kitchen, they would like throw, they would hurl cookies onto the ground because they didn't want to get caught because they knew, you know, they knew I was coming. So like a lot of people were on my meal plans at Lumosity. And so- So I want to pause because not everyone who listens to this works in a San Francisco tech company and understands what that entails. So like, tell us about working at Lumosity and like how that either helped, hindered, uh, or something else with your well-being journey and those that you got on the Julie diet. Oh, that's such a great question. I forget. I didn't give the context because I was thinking, oh, I'm talking to Dragon. Of course he knows. So San Francisco tech companies, the beauty of working in tech and why it was so hard for me to leave tech is, you know, tech is a very high margin, fast growth. And so there's a lot of money flying around that employers can use to create a really nice work environment for employees. So Lumosity treated us incredibly well. I was surrounded by really, really smart, hardworking people and we had tons of massive fridges that were constantly stocked with like ready to eat expensive food from places like FireRight. We had full catered lunches and dinners five days a week. So there was food everywhere. And this is one of the reasons why I stood out so much there because despite the fact that there was catered food, I would still bring my own food and eat my own food every oh, day. Wow. Right. Because I was really strict. I spent years because as soon as I figured out what I needed to eat, I was strict about it. So I would spend all Sunday grocery shop, meal prep, put my meal into my Tupperwares. And that's what I would eat all week. So it was, you know, it's obvious when you're in a tech company, you sit down for lunch, everyone else is in line for catering. And I'm just there with my Tupperware. I look like that crazy person. But for me, <laughs> I knew what the cost was because, you know, it wasn't like I was trying to be all skinny or anything. For me, the health problems were just so real. Like I don't, I didn't want to be depressed again. I didn't want eczema to come back to my face. Like no foods are worth it for me, for me to yeah. suffer like that again. I yeah. knew the cost. So, so, you know, that's the context. You're, you're in this place with a hundred something peers who are mostly in their twenties and thirties, free food everywhere. And I was the one eating out of Tupperware. So, you know, that's the context of people asking me to put them on a diet. Yeah. So because I was the health nut in the office. <laughs> yeah. Hey there, just a few words about the incredible show sponsors for today's episode, and then we'll dig right back in. Today's show is brought to you by Veg Nutrition, Live Better. So I'm actually a veg elite athlete. And before I joined the team, I spent months doing my due diligence to make sure that the company was vision, mission, and value aligned with me, my values, my mission, my vision, and my lifestyle. I got to know the owners super well. I even got to know the person who formulates all the products, and they passed with flying colors. So I couldn't be more excited to represent a company that I feel so aligned with. And I want to tell you about two of my favorite products. The first is the veg pre-workout. So when I first went vegan or mostly vegan, the last thing for me to go fully vegan was finding a vegan pre-workout that gave me the focus, the energy, and the power that I was looking for. And I can tell you, this is the best pre-workout that I've ever had. It gives me incredible focus and energy. And what's probably the best is it leaves me with no crash after I take it, which is great. And the flavors are so freaking good. There's literally peach mango and a Patriot pop that tastes like, you know, the firecracker popsicles, cherry lemon lime flavor. They're literally so good that I can dry scoop them. And they just released a watermelon flavor for just in time for summer, and it's incredible. So that's the first product. The second product is arguably also my favorite, and that's the plant protein. Comes in three incredible flavors, chocolate peanut butter, vanilla ice cream, and cold brew 
coffee. Yep, you heard me. Cold brew coffee flavor. It tastes incredible. All three flavors, 25 grams of protein, fully organic, incredible ingredients, heavy metal tested, and it is my go-to post-workout. Make sure that I'm recovering and refueling and giving my muscles the protein that they need to rebuild for that next workout. So go to vegnutrition.com slash dragon and try their full line of supplements and you'll get 15% off. Or you can just use dragon at checkout and you'll get 15% off. So that's vegnutrition.com slash dragon to get 15% off. Veg Nutrition, live better. Yeah, and, you know, just a shameless plug, the whole point behind Garten and, you know, the snack programs and the catering programs that we we do for companies is because, like, similar to what I was saying before, we're a product of our environment. Like, Julie is, like, a, like, anomaly that she was able to, like, have the discipline to meal prep, shop all day Sunday, meal prep all day Sunday, and then bring that Tupperware stand out because i'm sure that wasn't like i'm sure eventually you got comfortable but in the beginning i'm sure it was kind of like oh god i'm like the weirdo bringing the tupperware and like you know but it was so important to you that you didn't care and i'm sure people learned to love you for it and you learned to like really love and you know almost like enjoy being different i have a feeling uh (laughs) So, but like, like most people like just eat whatever is available at the office. So if it is not empowering their well-being, like that company, you know, maybe inadvertently is, you know, making that well-being journey a really uphill climb, Uh, maybe even putting people like backwards, moving them backwards on their well-being journey. So that's why I'm so passionate about what we do at Garden. Yeah. So back to your story. How did you, I mean, so you're, you're getting these people on the Julie, the Julie plant diet and are, is everyone bringing Tupperware? Like, <laughs> like how does this work at Lumosity? And by the way, like Lumosity is an awesome company and Julie has said nothing but great things about it. But like the fact that is that like oftentimes company uh, spend their money on food, not realizing that it is so unhealthy because like a lot of food gets disguised as healthy uh, when it's really not. And I'm doing air quotes there. So, but yeah, back, back to like Julie diet, the, uh, you know, the tons of people with Tupperware, how did all that work? Like, yeah. So you, know, you raise a great point that the environment has such a strong impact on our health and a lot of companies, they are well intentioned, but don't know the nuances of nutrition and know how hard they make it on people to be healthy if they're surrounding them with potato chips all day. Right. So yeah, that, you know, that was the context then. And I put, I started putting people on the Julie diet as they nicknamed it. And after I'd put enough people on it, I started to have pattern recognition and realized, Oh, I think I can create a templated version of this. That's, you know, eight weeks long that I could put pretty much anyone through no mm. matter where they live. And because my specialty in marketing at Lumosity was what's called life cycle marketing. It's how you take someone on the customer journey from you know, knowing nothing about you and really like shepherding them along and figuring out you know, what are the key points in the user experience and how does the storytelling about what you're doing change at those key points. So that was my background. And so when I created what I called the body test, it was an eight week program where I held people's hands through basically doing an elimination diet for eight weeks. And they would get an email pretty much every day with a little bit of little snippet of education from me. And it was fully automated. And they would take these survey questions that they could do every day or once a week. And I was, I would just put everything into Excel and just send them their charts back where I would just have them track stuff like their mood, their bloating, their sleep, things like that. And just to see their little report card and progress over time. So I put, I put a lot of people through that. I even ran some ads on Facebook just to get strangers into it and just see like, is this something people will pay for? Is this something that people will follow and do even if they have never met me before 
And I did learn, you know, it was something people would pay for and it was something that would help people even if they had never met me. But what I saw was if I would check in on people six months later, nine months after they had done the body test, right? They, a lot of them had gained a lot of the weight back. And mm -hmm. so I, and I would say, well, what happened? Because you learned, you, know, you really learned how to eat when you were doing the body test and they just could not keep up with the meal prepping, right? They yeah. just could not keep up with it, which yeah. makes a lot of sense. I think most people can only do it for so long before they fatigue on it. It's not just the time, but also if you're not a good home chef, you're basically torturing yourself on top of that because you're just eating food that tastes like crap, right? So, so most people aren't going to be able to do that for very long. And I, you know, I wanted to solve for that because even I myself, I was tired at that point. I had been meal prepping Sundays for years. And I thought to myself, okay, I make a lot of money now. And yet I still have to spend my entire Sunday. I have like a sixth work day every week Yeah. where I, you know, and I was like, why can't I pay someone to do this for me? And I didn't trust any of the meal prep services that existed at that time. I researched them all. And I was like, no, these just aren't high quality enough. I'm not going to eat that. And so what I decided to do was I approached one of my best friends and I told him, Hey, you know, let's, let's hire a private chef and like split the cost with a bunch of other people. Like I have a lot of friends who I bet would want me to manage a private chef that feeds all of us because they, you know, they, I was trusted by my friends at that point for knowing a lot about nutrition. And so it started out with hiring a personal chef where I would just plan the menus with the chef. And then we would just deliver food to the small pool of friends in San Francisco. And it was very expensive at the people. time. Oh, it was probably maybe like around 10, wow. something small like that. You're and, such an and, entrepreneur. It's so <laughs> cool. But it was great. And my plan was, okay, if I like do this for enough people, then I get to eat for free, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I would charge all my friends because I was doing all the coordination and work you know, around, I think it was 25, 35 bucks a meal. It was pretty high back then because we didn't have a large pool of people and it was, you know, it was a private chef. There wasn't scale. And so I was doing that, still working at Lumosity. That was great. I was like, great. I have my meal prep solved now. I don't have to cook on Sundays anymore. And, you know, months were going by and it was interesting seeing that none of my friends dropped off. Right. So they, like, oh, everyone cool. was taking care of it. Right. And I was like, wow. So if someone so basically, gets just to clarify, everyone who was on chef's uh, Ju chef Ju Julie's chef plan mm -hmm. was able to stick with it almost indefinitely. Yeah, they just stuck with it, even at that price point. And I remember I, ha I had a boyfriend at the time and I was like, wow, I just can't believe how much everyone is paying and that they haven't dropped off yet. They must really like me, is what I said <laughs> to my boyfriend. And he was like, he's like, they're spending 200 something dollars a week. They're not doing it because they like you. They're doing it because they like are getting value out of what you're giving them, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like no one likes you that much. Like I hate to break <laughs> it to you. <laughs> And so that was really eye-opening to me. I, so I realized, wow, there's like a real pain point here for people. Like people really want to pay someone to like take care of their food for them. So um, that's when I you know, talked to, to Steven, who was helping me with this. And, I, and we said like, wow, should we just do this full time? We're having fun. And there seems to be a problem. And I remember going and grabbing my, he was, Kunal was the CEO of Lumasi at the time. He was my mentor. I, I grabbed lunch with him and I said, Hey, you know, I've been doing this thing. I told him about the idea. And I said, I think I want to do it full time. I really like it. And he was like, okay, well, like how many people do you think in San Francisco want a service like this? Cause he just wanted to know, you know, what am I trying to do? And I like sat there at the lunch and I was like, I don't know, maybe like 200 people. So I thought it would be just like a nice little lifestyle business where, you know, I would just get like more people. It would be enough for me to have like a little salary Right. And we'd have like this nice, small, tight customer base, you know, is what I thought would happen. So he and I agreed on an end date for my role. I was VP of marketing at Lumosi at the time. You know, I rolled off there, started. I, and then I, so this is the riskiest thing I've ever done. I took my entire retirement savings out and put it into methodology to purchase an existing kitchen <laughs> in Concord. <laughs> so... So Steven and I like seeded the company. I like literally just went all in on it. And you know, so there's no turning back. You wow. Know, no turning back. I'm super impressed. And that is just, 
<laughs> really risky. And wh what age were you? Do you mind me asking? Uh, I So we've been doing this about six years now. So I was about 32 when that happened. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So you had been working for what? 10 years? Uh, yeah. Eight years? Mm -hmm. So you took eight to 10 years worth of retirement savings and put it towards a, a dream that put it towards uh, a dream that I just put it was towards the well-being dream towards the, put it towards the well-being dream I was having fun and I to me it's still then and now I think it is one of the most important problems to help people with because food affects every aspect of our health I experienced it myself so yeah so we started doing it full time and you know people just kept joining and it just kept growing and so eventually we raised some money so that we could stale and yeah the rest is history that's that's pretty incredible so give us a scope tell us a little bit more you know for the people who aren't familiar with meth methodology you know obviously i'm a user you know what is you know tell us a little bit more about the nuances um and you know i can add in you know, my two cents, because it's like super easy to use. <laughs> At first, I thought I was gonna be like, Julie, like walk me through this. And then I was like, Oh, this is super intuitive. <laughs> <laughs> well, so the reason why the company is called methodology is because I believe that the key to being healthy is to basically surround ourselves with healthy food, right, and make that food really accessible and convenient and to keep the unhealthy stuff out of our homes. So yeah, I imagine a world where every time you open your fridge, it's just filled with the most health promoting, delicious, beautiful food you could possibly eat at that given time. And that's what I wanted for our customers is every time they open the fridge, the food is just there. And, and that's why we set up methodology and as it is. So it's named methodology instead of a foodie name, because I wanted people to realize like this is a system for ensuring that you eat healthy consistently. This isn't something that you bounce in and out of. It's not a fad diet or anything like that. It's meant to become a part of your lifestyle. Yeah. And so it's a weekly subscription. And the way it works is you come in, you tell us some things about your diet preferences. Like if you're vegan, for example, things you can't eat because we take food sensitivities really seriously, of course. Yeah. So you tell us what your food sensitivities are. You tell us what your appetite is because uh, most of our meals come in two sizes. There's just a standard size that's around four to 500 calories. And there's a large that's a little bit bigger. So you, you pick your, your meal size. You tell us whether you want breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, and the days of the week that you want food. And then we do two deliveries a week. The food comes in glass jars. Uh, before COVID, we had a closed loop supply chain um, to take back the jars. But right now that's paused, but we want to get that going at some point again, because the goal for us is to be as close to zero waste as possible long term. So here's a jar uh, that was from the three sisters. Those who can't see, I'll explain. Basically, they're these beautiful, clear, like mason-like jars. This is a... Uh, one of them had three sisters chipotle stew tempeh chorizo in it that I just had for lunch today. So normally I'll like block off like a full like, you know, hour to like prep my own food for lunch. And this was like super quick. But these jars are, are awesome. I, we love mason jars. So I'm actually happy you're not taking them back because like I already got water in it. So those who can't see, I, I already washed it out and put water in it. So in case I needed more water during this uh, <laughs> this podcast interview, I would have it. But uh, yeah, they're really cool. I mean, even um, for me, I'm a bit of like, and I hope you don't take this offensive at all. I'm a bit of kind of like a science-y kind of like nerdy person. And to just see the whole meal in a jar like that, I was like, this is rad. Like, I just like looking at it. And then what, when it was in my fridge, you know, it was just cool to open the fridge and be like, oh, there's a meal. And it looks so cool. And then, you know, I threw it uh, basically in a pan and heated up for a few minutes. So it was like essentially whole food, like fresh cooked. And, you know, for those who follow me on Instagram and whatnot, uh, are familiar with my dragon bowls, which is just a giant bowl of salad. I just threw it right on top of there and it literally cut my meal prep time from like 30 to 40 minutes to maybe like five to seven. 
you know, and so I got to get to my meal that much sooner, um, which it was just so nice now, uh, for, for someone during the work day, like, wow. Like, so I ordered it for, like for lunch for five days in a row. And, and it's just been really incredible, uh, for me these last few days to get a bunch of time back. Oh, I love hearing about it from you because especially what you mentioned about the way you feel when you open the fridge and it's such a, I don't know. It's such a soothing moment to open your fridge and see all these meals there ready to go in glass. And you can kind of just see it and you know, like, okay, if I get, you know, if I get hungry, I have something healthy and tasty, just like there waiting for me. And there's just something about that that I think is really comforting. Yeah. Cause normally like, I'll be like, honestly, I'll look at my watch and be like, okay, when's my next meeting? Do I have enough time to, to prep the meal that I really want? Because I cook everything from scratch. You know, I'm 80 to 90% whole food, you know, 100% plant-based vegan. You know, I do have my mock meats and, you know, some vegan treats here and there. But for the most part, I'm eating whole food and it takes time to prep that. You know, a traditional meal for me is a giant salad with a bunch of uh, cut up vegetables, stir fried, and then like some tofu and some sort of grain and some sort of legume. And it takes time to put all that together. It's amazing and delicious and I, I love it, but like it's honestly a 30 to 50 minute preparation process each time that I cook from scratch. So a lot of times what I do in order for it to work for me is I will make a giant stir fry at night that I then save half of for lunch the next day. So when I'm in between my meetings and my Zoom meetings, I just basically either throw it in the microwave, which I rarely do because I try not to use a microwave, but I just throw it back in the pan and it's ready to go in like minutes because basically it was like, so methodology for me was like sort of what I already do, right? Mm -hmm. Like, in, but it's better in the sense that it's exposing because, you know, I'll cook a lot of the very similar things. I changed the spices, changed the plants. But like today I had this three sisters chipotle stew and tempeh chorizo. Like I haven't had tempeh chorizo and like unless I, you know, maybe the, one of the times I went to a vegan restaurant. Right. So for me, it was a total treat. And again, like for the record, Julie did not pay me for any of this. Like, I'm not just like repping on her company because I'm getting some like backdoor deal here. I just want to speak to her company be and bring it to life because it brought more life to my life. It brought more well-being, more ease, you know, for someone who is super busy. Like, you know, not only do I lead sales at my company, but I'm also like now doing a podcast. And so it's like, now I have even less time. And, you know, I'm like an aspiring influencer on Instagram. So time is like the one, like Julie said, kind of at the beginning of this, like one of the most precious things that we have, because like we all get the same amount and we all get 24 hours and it's like, how are we going to spend it? And like, I love how Julia was like, how do I get my sixth work day back? So she hires a chef. And I've been thinking for myself a lot of time, like, how do I get more time back? I love my food, but I, I don't want to start eating McDonald's or like prepackaged meals because I like fresh whole food. Mm -hmm. So for me, being able to like layer in Julie's, her meals into my life gave me time back and it brought new experiences. I don't remember the exact name of the meal I had yesterday, but it was like a miso. It had these mushrooms in it that I haven't eaten in years. And for me, I love mushrooms and I've been looking for these new mushrooms at the grocery store. And I just had these incredible new mushrooms and two new meals that I haven't had, you know, maybe ever. And that just brought more life to my well-being and my eating life. So thank you, Julie. Thank you, Methodology. That was like super awesome. So yeah, and for me, just to speak to the experience, like I did, I, I went online. And the reason I'm talking so much about this is because uh, I think it's like, oh, Methodology, it's a company, whatever. But really, like, one of the points of this podcast is to encourage people to take responsibility for their well-being journey. And to realize that really like we can have a lot of fun doing it. And there's so many incredible people and resources and companies that will support us if we choose to like, you know, take them on. 
And I use the word responsibility in the, in, in the, the sense, not as like an onerous thing to do, but really as an opportunity to respond to something that happens, the ability to respond to maybe a well-being situation that you're not happiness happy with. Maybe you're not happy with your weight. Maybe you're not happy with your fitness. Maybe you're not happy with your mood, uh, like Julie talked about. And, you know, Julie knows I'm like incredibly passionate about well-being in all, all aspects. And we truly are what we consume, especially when it comes to food. And we are products of our environment. So methodology was so incredible because like I could literally just like, hey, I'm vegan. Like I want full meals. So I'm, I'm like one of those weirdos. Like Julie mentioned the meat, the, uh, the five to 600, four to 500 calorie meal. And then there's a large size. So I ordered the large size because I just wanted to throw it on a bed of salad and be like, that's my meal. And I have, you know, for those who follow me, like I track all everything I eat. And it was incredible because I could literally just enter the macros into my fitness pal and, you know, add the, uh, you know, salad, uh, that I, that I bet of salad I put onto it and I was done. And it was like, oh my God, you just saved me so much time. Cause normally as I'm, I'm putting these dragon bowls together, it's like, okay, 500 grams of stir fry, put that into my fitness pal. Okay. Uh, you know, hundred grams of be- black beans. Okay. Put that into my fitness pal. And now it was just like one meal and, and my salad and I was done. And it's so, it sh- <laughs> and again, like I'm crazy, like Julie, like who would meal prep for an entire day. I track everything. And I, I've been thinking a lot over the last, you know, year or so, like, how do I continue to streamline my own well being journey where I still fit the things that are incredibly important to me, like tracking my food and whole food and methodology really made that so easy. Cause it was literally like, okay, I'm vegan. Okay, cool. I want full meals. I want the biggest ones that have like, literally all the meals have like 25 to 30 plus grams of protein in it for someone who considers themselves an athlete. That's incredibly important to me. And I, it was just such a seamless experience that showed up, you know, on on sunday night and you know funny enough i texted uh jewelry and i was like hey i'm exhausted like i don't even have time to unbox this because i want to do an unboxing story for instagram can i leave this overnight and she was like you can leave it until the end of next day so i literally got this on sunday night and i didn't even open it until monday afternoon And that, again, was that convenience for me was so incredible because like it was a super long day on Sunday. It was awesome. But like I go to bed early because I get up crazy early and then it was a crazy Monday. Now, I didn't even get to the box until like, honestly, like 4 p.m. So I had the methodology on Monday for dinner and I was like, oh, my God, I don't even have to cook my meal for dinner. And it saved me a massive amount of time. And, you know, at the end of the workday, God, it's so hard to cook, like, and, and eat nutritiously. If you've had like a super stressful and like, let's be real, Mondays are often like a freaking, you know, chaos for a lot of us. Cause it's like, all right, kick the week back off and tons of stuff. So like, just for me to be able to like throw it in a pan, heat up whole food, throw it on a bed of salad. And I was like, done. I was like, that just gave me so much mental bandwidth back. So that was really cool. So what you're doing, Julie, is really awesome. So I just want to like commend you and your company and share some of my own experience. So people can kind of, you know, as they're trying to understand, you know, how can I be as, you know, fit and healthy and happy as possible? And yeah, Julie's uh, service is more expensive than eating at McDonald's every day. But like, really like, uh, you know, one of my great friends says health is wealth. And I couldn't agree more because, you know, in my own case, like I've gone through depression similar to Julie and I've, you know, obviously had skin challenges, uh, as I mentioned, and I've had challenges with my own, you know, physical, uh, you know, appearance and body and, uh, man, when you have your well being on, like dialed in 
life is so good and so much better. So, so much better. And I love the way you tell the story because I think what I'm hoping is that a lot of people who listen have never used a meal prep company before. And the way they think about the value and the pricing, if you know, if you're only comparing it to what you, you know, if you ordering a salad off DoorDash, for example, it's not really the right comparison, right? Yeah. Because always having that stuff ready in the fridge so that at the end of a workday, when you're exhausted, it's there, it's whole foods, you know exactly what's in it. You have all the macros, right? Like there's yep. just so much surrounding it. It's just so much more, you're getting so much more from the experience than just getting something delivered. A hundred percent. And it's really, I really love how, like, it's so cool that you shared your luminosity story and the fact that you're VP of marketing and that your focus was like life cycle. Which for me, now I understand why the process for me as a methodology user the last two days in my experience, like why it felt so good is because like you really thought through the life cycle, like what is it like to get it in the box? Like even the box for me was fun and exciting to open up, even though I knew what meals were coming. Like I knew which ones were coming, but I was like, oh, sweet. Like science project. I want to look at this awesome bottle. And, but it's not like, okay, now you add the sugar and then you put in the flour and then you're baking a cake and it takes like five hours. No, it's like literally like whole food that's already been pre-cooked to a certain degree that just takes them like a few minutes on uh, like a pan on the stove. Or if you want to go the microwave route, which you totally can, but I guarantee it'll taste better if you cook it in a pan. Um, and literally it's almost the same time. Like, honestly, that's one thing I've learned. Funny enough, if you cook in a wide pan, just so everyone who does this is really wide pan where you can spread the food out, it will cook it just as fast and better than a microwave. So that's exactly true. Right if you cook that big, get the big Le Creuset on Amazon. You can use that the rest of your life, pass it down to your children. It's one of the best purchases you'll ever make for reheating your methodology or any other food that you have at home. That's awesome. And that kind of ties into some of the few other things that I actually wanted to talk about before, you know, we end the show, because you spent hours and blood and sweat and tears investing in your own well-being, uh, education, experience, expertise, et cetera. So that was one of the things I really wanted to dig into. So obviously methodology is a tool that you have created to empower people in their well-being journey. Literally like taking really you're like you're taking a really like like heavy load, a high lift uh thing like cooking and food and you're making it super low lift. Really easy to empower people to get the time back so they can apply it, you know, maybe you're trying to get ahead at work, right? And like the last thing like we all have, you know, just like time, we also have only so much bandwidth. So you can't be like the best chef and the best, you know, VP of marketing and the best, you know, parent and the best, like you have to pick and choose. And the beautiful thing about Julie as an entrepreneur is she's always thinking like, how do I get my time back? How do I create systems? How do I create a method? Right? Right. And so I'm just curious, what are those other kind of methods, tools, and resources that you, like someone who's looking to take their well-being journey really to the next step, you know, whether they're a beginner in the middle middle of their well-being journey or even at the end, because like I'm already like learning like stuff from you and I want to know some of those other kind of tips and tricks and resources that you've really like found over over the years of your well-being journey? Oh, that's such a good question. I yeah, I'm happy like that to- pan that you mentioned on mm-hmm. Amazon. Like I want to know more things like that. And then like, yes. you know, reading material, uh, <laughs> etc. Yeah. So the pan thing, so I'll tell you what's so amazing about the pan, uh, why I love cast iron pan. So the Le Creuset cast iron pan, it's already basically pre-seasoned. And what I love about about it is you never have to wash it. So you put it on your stove, you spray it with some avocado oil, you heat your food on it, right? You take the food off. When the pan cools, you throw salt on the pan, you take a paper towel and you just scrub the food off, throw it in the trash can and put the pan 
back on the stove. So you, you don't, cause you're not technically supposed to put soap on it. So you never really have to wash the pan and the older the pan gets and the more food is cooked onto it, the tastier your food is when it browns on it. So it's a pan that gets better with age. So okay, you're making me like beam right now because we have some cast iron uh, things, but my fiance always wants me to use this special oil to clean it. And I don't even want to use them because it's such a pain to clean. So I'm going to have to look up this pan. And so you're saying I can just throw salt on it, scrub it, mm-hmm. wipe it off with a paper towel and yep. it's good to go. Yeah. And it's good to go as, you know, as long as you always put enough oil on it when you're cooking and you don't let water dry on it, right. So that it rusts, then you're going to be ah. fine. Mm-hmm. Good, good to know. This is the kind of stuff I want to know. Like you're totally educating me mm-hmm. like, okay, like yeah. th- give us more. Exactly. This is that's, perfect. That's the pan I might actually, so I don't, I use this giant pan. I don't know if it's cast iron or not. It's definitely super high quality. We have some cast iron, like we have one of those like uh, on the stove uh, grills. Like it's a cast iron, like it's got the grill marks in it, but like, and I love using it during the summer, but man, it's a be a uh, to, cl- to clean. Yeah, exactly. That's why I'm telling you, get this, get this liquor, say you just scrub it with salt. I usually am so lazy that I take, I do the salt thing right before I'm about to use it again. And I just leave it with whatever food crust. Cause I'm just, it's fine. Actually, it's yeah. totally fine. So, That's awesome. and it's faster than the microwave and tastes way better. So yeah, I- if for anyone who's never eaten off a cast iron, like food cooked off cast iron, it is, I know it sounds crazy. Like, Oh, what's the difference between that and like a Teflon or putting in the microwave? Like, literally just try it and pay attention to what you're eating and you will taste and smell mm-hmm. and feel the difference. Yeah. Plus tiny amounts of whatever you cook on leach into your food. And so it's actually a lot of women are deficient in iron. So you're going to get a little bit of iron in your diet as well from using a cast iron. So that's awesome. Uh, well, yeah, that's a, a, lot of benefits. Mm-hmm. a lot of benefits come from that. So that's, that's the pan tip. As far as other habits, I would say, okay, so I guess there are two that I can cover today that I think might be more contrarian and weird that that might be interesting to people who are listening. Yeah. So one thing, and they're kind of related, is I changed, I can't remember, a couple of years ago, I changed the way I set goals from being about outcomes that I wanted to achieve, such as, you know, I want to weigh this weight or be this body fat percentage. I changed the way I set goals away from outcomes towards character right? Mm. And behaviors. So what I decided to do instead was really think about the character traits that I really value. And then think about the set of behaviors every day that characterize a person, you know, who has those character traits. So for me, one of the things that I learned about myself personally that I, and the way I found out about it is because there are all these questions that you can brainstorm to figure out your values. And one of them is think about the people who you're most attracted to, like, why are you attracted to them? And so Funny thing was that something that kept popping up on my list with different men I was attracted to was I was attracted to really disciplined men, right? So discipline is apparently a character trait that I really value. And so I thought about it and said, okay, how do I become a person who's really disciplined? What does that mean? What are the behaviors that a disciplined person does in their life every day? And so I started this habit tracker and, you know, I write stuff, you know, it's, it's, I use a grid notebook like this. And every month I write just a list in different categories of health work, relationships, I write a set of behaviors that I want to do every day that month. Right. And it's, and it's meant to be simple enough that I'll do it every day. And so as an example, one of the thing goals that I set in June of last year, so I work out like I'm very sporadic. I've never been so good about working out. I'll be really strict for like eight or 12 weeks and I'll do a really hard program with a coach or a trainer and get in really great shape. And I might do two or three cycles of that. But then there are often times where I'll just stop working out completely for like four to six months. So I've always been really irregular with my workouts. And so I set this goal last year that sounded impossible at the time, but I said the goal, okay, I'm going to work out 365 days in a row, which I know for some people, they already do that. But for me, like I was so, I was so, I'm like a sporadic person and I don't like working out. It was like a big deal. So that was one of the things that I wrote in my habit tracker. Yeah. And so what I do in the habit tracker is every day, I just write a number. So I was just counting up two, three, four. I would just write that in the grid every day. And Mm -hmm. 
And one of the things that I did was I stepped back and said, okay, well, what do I, what do I define as a workout? I need a workout that I am 99% confident I can do every day for 365 days. Um, but I also want it to be hard enough that I would get stronger, even if the progress were really slow. Cause listen, I'm not competing. It's not public. I don't need to be like embarrassed, you know? So it didn't need to be that hard of a workout. It needed to be enough so that I would get stronger, but I didn't have like an outcome or a goal or body fat. So it didn't need to be too hard. So I designed a workout program for myself where I basically just do 15 minutes of like hit circuit training, you know, things like burpees and weights and lunges and jumping lunges and things like that. And then like a just incline walk for you know 15 to 45 minutes. And so I think I'm reaching my 250 day mark in like a couple days. And so, so that's just an example. And, and I'm actually now, even though my workouts are technically the easiest they've ever been, because I used to, when I was working out, they would be hard workouts, right? So, cause I did bodybuilding training for years. I worked out with personal trainers who would train bikini competitors. And I was doing those kinds of workouts myself. And so I did that for years, but the problem was they're like so hard that like, I would just drop off and just not want to do them anymore. So unsustainable. Yeah. So for me anyways, because I just don't love the process enough. So yeah. the funny thing now is like, I'm now, even though my workouts are easier, but because I've been consistent for about 250 days, like I'm now stronger than I ever was, even when I was doing the bodybuilding workouts, right? Like I didn't, you just, I just never thought that with 15 minutes of strength training, if I just do it for like a year, <laughs> I could be stronger than when I was doing sporadic bodybuilder workouts, right? Mm -hmm. So I just, so it's just been really amazing to learn that I think we really underestimate because if you kind of do the math on it, you know, what's 1.01 times 1.0, you know, 1% improvement every day for 365 years. Like, what does that end up being after one year? Or like, how does that compound? Right. So I think we really underestimate percent. Like, um, yes, yeah, small, small, small improvements because we're all like, there's like this competitiveness and there's this you know, like it's almost embarrassing to say you do a 15 minute workout, right? Like it's like unheard of because yeah, like, like if, if someone asks you like, what do you do? I work out for 15 minutes a day. You know, they would, it's just like, no one does that. Right. So no one works out 15 minutes a day, but I, I just wanted to see, cause it wasn't about becoming a fitness model for me. It was about, like I said, the character trait, tying it back. I want to be a disciplined person. And to me, a disciplined person will say that she will work out every day, even when she doesn't feel like it. Yeah. So, and that's like the person who I wanted to be in. So now like it's built so much confidence, right? Cause I'm now proud of myself. I now think of myself as a really disciplined person because how many days? Yeah, I think it's almost 250 now in a couple of days. And I'm like that's really confident different. at this point, I'm not going to break it because I don't want to, you know, at a certain point you're like so high up on the count that you know, I don't want to start from one again. I want to hit my 365 day goal. So that's been really life changing for me to just really think, rethink the way. So those are kind of the two things: rethink goal setting um, away from being about outcomes and more about the kind of character traits that I would be proud to say that I have. Hey there! Just a few words about the incredible show sponsors for today's episode, and then we'll dig right back in. This show is brought to you by Feel Free from Botanic Tonics. This product is unlike anything I've ever had before. No joke. It's made with kava root and other ancient plants. And just half a shot gives me this incredible sense of focused flow and productivity. And I love to take just half a shot right before I work out. I take it with my pre-workout and it takes my workouts to the next level. It is seriously unlike anything I've ever had. It's also an incredible productivity tool for any big work projects that you have or long periods of time where you just need to be super focused in flow state and get a lot of shit done. So if you want to give this a shot, you can go to botanictonics.com and use code DRAGON at checkout to get 40% off your first order. No joke. 40% off with code DRAGON. That's feel free from botanictonics.com, code DRAGON. Feel free, feel good. I, I feel like I'm just starting to wrap my head around that because, you know, I've been listening to, uh, I, I'm a personal development nerd, and recently I've been listening to Jim Rohn, 
and Jim Rome was the person who uh, basically, uh, you know, uh, trained Tony Robbins. And yeah, and, and several other, you know, uh, kind of big personal de- development people. And he talks about like, uh, when he talks about goals, he talks about who do you have to become to achieve those goals, which is essentially very similar to what uh, Julie is saying is like, what is the character that you want to embody? which is literally the same thing. And it's so much deeper than like, I want to lose 10 pounds or in my case, I want to gain 10 pounds of muscle. And like this year, like that's a real goal for me. And you just encourage, now I need to think about like, what is the character that I have to have in and truly embody in order to achieve 10 pounds of uh, lean muscle mass in a year. And I got to really think on that, like, and that's going to make it so much deeper, right? Because a big thing about goals, right, that, that I'm sure Julie is aware of, but for the audience, if you're not aware of, if you don't have a strong why, if your goal is, I want to lose 10 pounds, because I want to lose 10 pounds, you will not stick to that goal as soon as the first like crisis at work or in your family happens, that goes out the door. So you have to develop a super strong why. And I love the fact that Julie's talking about character because I think as we get older, we start to really think about the character the like that we the character traits that we want to embody. The, those are less important when you're young and it's more about like achieving things. And then later on, you start to think about like embodying character traits, like what is the life that I want to embody? So I really appreciate you sharing that, Julie. That's your, you got me thinking already. I'm already asking myself, why do I want to add 10 pounds of muscle? And I have some like some reasons, like some of the reasons are like, one, I want to show people that you can add muscle, lean muscle mass on a vegan diet. Well, why do I want to show people that you can, you know, you can do that. And like, it's really because I want everyone to, you know, be able to live like a life that is fully thriving um, on a plant-based diet. Well, why do you want that? And it just keeps getting deeper and deeper. And, and then now I'm like, okay, What's the character traits that I have to embody to achieve that? So I'm I'm going to stop talking there because that's like total gold you just shared. And thank you. And then you said you had one other contrarian one. Um, I I know they're related because the second one, I I ended up tying them together, which is this idea that with workouts, we think we, we think they need to be so hard because all of the fitness influencers they do really hard workouts, right? They're doing six days a week. And we take that point, like the regular people like me, right? We think that that's the formula. And we, and we think that we need a rest day. Like I don't need a rest day. Like I don't push myself that hard, right? Two of my days are abs. Those are basically rest days for like a real athlete. I sit down all day. So it's just this idea that we, um, we nearly need first principle thinking when we set up a diet for ourselves or a workout program. No, just a job. Tell yeah. me about first principle thinking. Yeah. So first principle thinking is this idea of yeah, figure out, you know, what is the root problem you're trying to solve for, right? And figure out how to solve like exactly what that is using a first principle. So for me, like I knew that I wanted to get stronger. The first principle with getting stronger is you have to stress yourself enough, right? You have to stress your muscles enough so that they get stronger. And there's no rule that says it has to be, you have to push yourself at a hundred percent right. To get stronger. That's like, that was the, that was the principle that I was challenging, right? There's an assumption that you have to push yourself at a certain level physically to get stronger. And so when I designed my workout program, I said, okay, you only have to push yourself enough to get stronger. It doesn't need to be at hundred percent. What if my workouts are at like 60% difficulty and because they're at 60%, I'm still getting stronger, but they're not so hard that I dread my workout and skip it. Right. And so it's in this sweet spot where I can get stronger, uh, but I can do it every day. So the first principle is to get stronger. You just need to stress yourself enough, right? You just need to stress yourself. Mm -hmm. Whereas like 
What's not actually true is to get stronger, you have to do 45 minutes of strength training where you push yourself at the maximum weight and do all these reps or whatever. Like that's yeah. not actually the first principle. That's how some people have designed something based on the first principle. So when you, when you figure out, like for me, getting stronger is about push myself enough so that my muscles grow stronger, right? Like that was all that I needed to follow. So yeah. that was one first principle in designing my workout program. And the other first principle that I designed it around is that consistency over a long period of time, right, will produce better results than like sporadic. So with those two principles in mind, I made this bet that if I do 15 minute workouts every day for a year, I'll be stronger than when I do intense bodybuilding workouts sporadically. And yeah. like so far that's turned out to be true. Hey there, just a few words about the incredible show sponsors for today's episode, and then we'll dig right back in. Today's show is brought to you by Fit Rich Vegan. If you're ready to get in the best shape of your life, double your income, and 10x your savings and investments, then this is the coaching program for you. But wait a minute, Dragon. Isn't this your coaching program? Heck yeah, it is. I spent the last eight years mastering my fitness and my finances. And I've built an incredible coaching program with an incredible team to help you get the body of your dreams and finally achieve that level of financial success that you've been seeking. So if you want to find out if you're a good fit for the program, go to fitrichvegan.com and book your free consultation today. Or you can just DM me on Instagram with the words fitrichvegan and we can chat about if it's going to be a good fit for you. I'm committed to empowering people to actually achieve their fitness and financial goals. I spent the last 20 years trying to figure this out on my own. And what I realized is the key to doing it is not doing it alone. You have to have coaches, you have to have mentors, and you have to be a part of masterminds. And that's exactly what Fitch Rich Vegan has. It has coaches, mentors, and it is a mastermind. So again, if you're ready to book your free consultation today, go to fitrichvegan.com or drop me a DM on Instagram. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I love that. And one of the things I want to point out that Julie said really about our career, but I think it, it applies to potentially this as well is she talked about like fun, like, right. You were having a ton of fun doing kind of like the, you know, uh, get station, uh, period of, of methodology that you turned it into a full-time, you know, career, um, a calling really. Um, it, it really is a calling, not even a career because you're so passionate about well-being and I think I'm sure like for you, 15 minutes is fun, but 45 minutes starts to become like not so fun. Right. And the, the, there's kind of like two things I want to point, pull out there. One is like, there's fun for everyone is different. Like, so in stark contrast to Julie, I love to work out so much that I, I, I have to force myself to take a, like not go to the gym because I overtrain. I train too much because I enjoy it so much that I can spend hours at the gym. And then I actually go to beyond well beyond enough to the point of where I'm not actually making the gains that I want. So to pull this into illustration, I started working with an online coach back in the end of 2013. And prior to that, I would work out seven days a week. And I would go to the gym and bodybuild for one to two plus hours. And then I would go hike for two to three hours or do, or do yoga for an hour. And one of the first things he taught me was like, Justin, you have to take at least one full rest day, if not like, you know, one to two a week. And as soon as I took those rest days, I suddenly started like achieving way more like of the results that I wanted because my body actually had time to rest and recover. So the point that I'm illustrating is they're like 
millions of different uh, ways to work out. But the key is like, what's fun for you. So for me, a gym is like a giant man child playground. Like, so I love it. But like, what is enough, right? And seven days a week, you know, working out for two to three day, hours a day and hiking and yoga is too much. So it's okay if you like to work out every day for 45 minutes or longer, but make sure that you are giving yourself just enough to create the growth and not too much where you burn out like Julie or where you're not achieving the goals like me. Or if 15 minutes sounds fun and 45 minutes sounds like a nightmare, <laughs> do 15 minutes of some sort of exercise that really lights you up. Right. You know, like you don't have to bodybuild. You don't even have to do, you know, what Julie does. You could go, you know, rollerblade or whatever, as long as you move your body. So I think the point of fun and just enough is incredible. And then tie that to what's the character trait and, uh, and the person that you have to become to achieve that or to embody uh, those fitness goals and those character traits. And that's like a really powerful recipe for well-being success. Yeah, you sum I think you summarized it perfectly. I think for me, getting all those three things dialed in, like I, you know, I finally feel like I have a routine that I can see myself doing for years to come that I don't dread. It's just, it's reasonable, it's the right fit for me. It's yeah. getting the results that I need. Because yeah, because it's it's a really good checklist. Yeah. And, you know, one thing I'm going to posit to you, Julie, that I posit to a lot of people is like, what's fun for you now, right? Your 15 minutes of like whatever routine you're doing, you know, after 365 days, it may no longer be fun or maybe at 299 mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe you change up your routine, you stick uh, to your, your daily plan, but you change up your routine because like if fitness isn't fun for you, like it's time for a change because, you know, one way to really embody fitness in life is to make it fun for you. And that changes over time. You know, for myself, like when COVID hit, I was like, I can't go to the gym anymore. And I used to love gymnastics as a kid. So I started a gymnastics ring training program in my garage. And I invested in that. It was like a $90 program. So there's nothing wrong with investing in your well-being because like I said earlier, you know, health is wealth. So, you know, whether you're using methodology or you're using, uh, you know, some rings training program or whatever, don't be scared to invest in your health and your well-being. Um, you know, just go after the things that are going to bring more ease to your life, bring more fun, bring more consistency like Julie said, consistency is so key. So any last words? Because I think those like kind of uh, things that you shared about the pan, the goal setting, and the really the just enough, like are incredible tips uh, and takeaways for people. But last words for the audience, you know, s someone who's, you know, just starting out on their well-being journey, or maybe like they're in a rut in their well-being journey. Yeah, I just don't want to say that you look at Justin and me, maybe you may look at us and think that you could never be <laughs> like these well-being junkies. But just know there was a point where I was eating fast food every day, not working out at all on a ton of dr prescription drugs, not drugs. That sounds crazy. On I was on drugs. So <laughs> I was that person. But we can talk about that in another episode. And I remember during that time, I looked at healthy people and never thought I could be like them. Like it was just so foreign to me, the idea of eating all those vegetables, because I just, it was so different from how my diet was. And, and I just, I didn't think it was possible. So if you're looking at us and, and think it's impossible. You know, my advice is to, as Justin said, if you can just pick one area of your life, whether it's diet or workout or sleep, and really dial that in with the formula that we talked about, like what, what is the character trait you want to embody? You know, how do you make it fun for yourself and how do you, so that you can be consistent, you will, you know, you will put a flywheel in motion that will then make you want to do more things. So there's a long list that's almost infinite of ways you can get started, but maybe pick the thing that sounds most fun to you, whether it's like starting a workout or starting, you know, starting to meal prep your food or going to bed early and getting a full night's sleep, you know, just pick the thing that just sounds fun 
and start with that one thing, because that's how, you know, I can't speak for Jessica, but that's, you know, that's definitely how I started. And, and I just layered on habits. So I talked about that habit tracker that I have every month, right? I constantly layer on new habits. And once the habit is really dialed in where for months and months and months, I haven't missed it for a day. I don't keep it on my list anymore. I don't need to track it. It's just become a part of who I am. And so, you know, becoming someone like this isn't impossible. You know, it just takes time. It's literally just habits, you know, one at a time over the course of years. And I'm not a disciplined person. That's why I started methodology to be clear. That's why I had to like create, you know, I have to really think about how do I get myself to work out? I wasn't born disciplined. So if you think that you're not disciplined and you weren't born disciplined, I don't think people are born disciplined or not. You just kind of decide, or you just make a decision at some point that you're going to start to do behaviors that turn you into a disciplined person because we're not born what, that way or the other. You just need to make the decision that's a character trait that you really value and then and then start doing those behaviors one at a time, easy ones, fun ones every day. And one day you're just going to wake up, you know, look in the mirror like Justin to see a six pack and a happy person or whatever you end up seeing and think like, wow, you know, it's and it was all it was all worth it. Um, so just pick one fun easy thing. If I, you know, if you can just take one thing away today, I, I hope that you, you know, take one small step and, uh, and follow that formula. Cause honestly, I truly believe and that's why I started this company. Anyone can be healthy. The body wants to be healthy. The body wants it. Right. So, um, all you need to do is just set up the systems and environment for yourself so that you know, your body and, and health can really thrive. Yep. Julie from methodology. Overnight success, 10 years in the making. <laughs> so thank you so much for your time and your energy. It's so incredible to connect with someone as passionate about well-being as you are. What's the best place for people who want to connect with you? What's the best place online to do that? Well, our website is www.gomethodology.com. And we also have an Instagram account where the handle is Go Methodology. And that's G O as in like go towards your well being. Exactly. <laughs> awesome. Exactly. Cool. Well, Julie, thank you so much for your time. I'm going to hit end on the recording and we'll debrief, but you're awesome. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us. Thanks for having me. It was fun. Thanks for tuning in. And remember, literally everything can be used as an opportunity to learn, to heal, to grow, and to transform. So whatever is going on in your life, choose to consciously and proactively harness that energy and use it to alchemize your life to the next level. If you enjoyed the show, please share it with a friend or on your favorite social media and leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. As always, you can find me at Justin David Carl on Instagram and all the socials, as well as at alchemizelife.com on the web. Until the next time, sending you lots of energy and plenty of dragon magic. 